Hello, my friends, and welcome to very sunny Utah. As you can see, we are specifically at the San Rafael Swell, and this area is beautiful. This is one of my favorite deserts in the world. We're not too far from Moab and Canyonlands, and we're going on a little adventure. We're going to ride what's called a Swell Night Out. It's on bikepacking.com. It's about 70 miles, springtime. This is the time to be in the desert. It's only gonna be about 75 degrees for the next two days, and I'm feeling really good about being here. And guess what? I have a new Priority 600X because I gave mine away in Oaxaca. Eso! Excelente! So check it out. It's all shiny and new. I even have a new Green Guru frame bag. Oh man, it's so shiny. I love it, but we're gonna get it dirty because there's all sorts of red dirt here. There's not a whole lot of water, at least in the root, root description, it says there might not be any water at all. So we're gonna bring about five liters each. And I keep on saying we, right? I'm not out here alone. I'd like you to meet my friend, Scott. He's right over here. How's it going, bud? It's going well. How you doing today? I'm uh, psyched to get out in the desert. That's right. So you might recognize... Oh man, the mic went out. These things happen from time to time with technology. Anyway, what I'm doing here is introducing my friend Scott Jurek. He is one of the most well-known and decorated ultra runners of all time. He's won pretty much every big race on the planet, including the Western States 100, a record seven times in a row. If you've read the book Born to Run, Scott is one of the main characters. He's down there in the Copper Canyons racing the local Tarumanas. I met Scott shortly after he moved to Boulder and I was like, hey man, we should be friends. And since then, we've done a handful of fun adventures together. Last year, he helped pace me to my best time ever at the Leadville 100. But mostly, I just hang out with him and his super awesome family. Oh yeah, look at that beautiful flag. And one of his coolest feats, I think, is that he once ran the entire length of the Appalachian Trail, setting the record. How long did that take you, Scott? 46 days. 46 days. How long Eight does it take hours, the average? Seven minutes, yeah. <laughs> the average through hiker takes, you know, it's, it's a good three to five months. I mean, five to six months is leisure <laughs> pace but uh yeah no it's it's fun but i also love going uh going nice and mellow which i think we're going to be doing today because yeah. i have not been on long bike rides i've just been commuting around town with the kiddos and so it's fun yeah getting getting revved up to do some adventures and uh stoked to be out here so i also have a, a clean brand new bike what, <laughs> kind, of, what kind of bike do you have <laughs> oh guys. what i know we're gonna be twins <laughs> Scott also has the Priority 600X. Where'd you get this bike, man? How'd you know about this bike? Um, I heard it from some guy, you know, <laughs> on the street to Boulder, you yeah. know, just cruising around. But I hear he's pretty not... obnoxious about this bike. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty excited. But yeah, I'm excited. I have not like really done much mountain biking since like the 90s. So okay, you know, I'm dating myself, but that's all right. Uh, You're just yeah, a good. few years older than me. No big deal. Just a few years. And I see you have suspension. That's new, huh? Yeah, exactly. I know. When's the last time you rode a bike with suspension? I think it was a stump jumper. <laughs> <laughs> and this area has a history of like uranium mining, right? From the Cold War? It does. And it even dates back. Like the first indigenous people that settled this land or, you know, roamed through here, they actually used the, believe it or not, the uranium for various things like you'll see even some on the rock formation supposedly like yellow so they'd use it to like dye the rock um which sounds kind of crazy to be playing with the uranium yeah. um but they would even use it i think the ute even used it as like war paint and i've actually never really been in this area i've been all over moab and the canyon lands but this is going to be my first time out here in the san rafael swell and if you're new to my channel and you're wondering what's going on with this crazy looking drivetrain this is a Gates carbon drive. It's not a chain, never needs to be lubed, lasts three times longer than a chain. And this right here is the pinion gearbox. It looks maybe like an e-bike motor, but it's not. Inside of there are all the gears and there's a 600% gear ratio and it's protected from the elements and mud and dust and snow and I love it. It is a low maintenance 
machine. So I have 2.5 liters in my hydration pack. The frame bag is full of food. We've got some dried fruits and bars and of course bean burritos. I have two more liters in one of these bags back here along with all of my camping equipment. We are not bringing tents because we don't think it's gonna rain and we like to cowboy camp. I get a lot of questions about where I keep my GoPro and I usually keep it clamped onto my handlebars like this. I don't film from my handlebars. It's just quick access. When I see something, I hit the record button while I'm riding and I start filming. I also have my drone and the drone footage out here is gonna look spectacular. And sometimes on technical terrain, I will put the GoPro on my helmet. I'm filming with the Sony RX100. I got a brand new one because I broke my last one in Rwanda. Oh, I dropped my camera. It's just kind of what happens when you're out in the middle of nowhere, bouncing around on bikes. Things break. There is no cell service out here, which is okay, because you can download this for offline use. You could download this route to any of your favorite route software apps, whatever, ride with GPS or any of them. And so that's how we're gonna navigate here with our cell phones. And I'm just waiting for Scott to be ready. <laughs> We have one brand new Priority 600X. We have another brand new shiny Priority 600X. We've got a Scott Jurek in the house. Let's get these things dirty. Huh? Let's get them dirty, my man. And as always, my friends, <laughs> no flatties, no, no crashies, crashies, no, no whammies. whammies. I can't believe you bring that back from the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> it's from that TV show, Press Your Luck. Remember, we go no whammies, no whammies, big money. Big Stop at all. Oh. When I had like sick days from off from school, I'd watch this show and that's how it led to this whole dorky no whammies thing. But I like it and it protects me. It's my good luck mantra. Do you have it's one? Good. It's good. Before um, you go on a big race or run, what do you how do you get yourself psyched up? I don't know. I feel like I don't know, the mantra that I turn to most and uh it's mostly when you're grinding. Yeah. <laughs> but it's uh uh, this is what you came for and I don't know I heard it from a yoga instructor years back and yeah it's like and this is what you come for I think like the good and all the stuff in between hey there it's time for a commercial and I'm selling my book this is a story about my very first bike packing adventure from Honduras to Boulder it's pretty much an inspirational adventure story about following your dreams you can get it at Doozer book Dot com and if you like this shirt I will link down below where you can buy this baby fueled by for holes for life all right bike it's time for another adventure huh. and it's heavy I would say our bikes weigh 60 65 pounds with all the stuff in the water it's good training it is good training which way are we going <laughs> left straight Scott Jerk on his first bike packing trip. I'm already breathing pretty heavily. I haven't ridden a totally weighed down bike in a long time. <laughs> How are you feeling? <laughs> well, we're definitely climbing. I was like, and it's also like, what? Just under 6,000 feet here? Yeah. So We're up high. For sure. Not a ton of oxygen in the air. I'm gonna be saying this a lot, but oh my God, look at that view. <laughs> Woo.
How do you like uh, the ride so far, Scott? Feels good. I've been ridden suspension like 30 years, so it's like I'm a rigid kind of guy, I guess. I'm not adopting the times. Yeah. Welcome to modern bicycles. <laughs> it's pretty sweet on the downhills, gotta say. Yeah. go up some steep stuff so there's about 8,000 feet of elevation gain on the entire route and I think most of it happens in the first 35 miles yeah it's steep steep yet just on the edge of rideable <laughs> You got it, you got it. Yeah. Is this your first time mountain biking in 30 years? <laughs> Looking good, buddy. Scott and I are having a little tree hugger hippie moment here. We're noticing that the cottonwoods here are blossoming. The leaves are coming out. Love the color of the new leaves, right? They're like lime green. They're so fresh. It's almost like you can make a salad out of these. <laughs> the vegan in me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's a lot of wildflowers. You know, the western states this winter had a lot of rain and snow, and including Utah. So things are looking lush and it feels good to be here because it's been cold in Boulder for a long time. And so to feel the heat out here, and it's not even that hot, where it's like 75, right? Yeah, no, it's as good. There's a, occasionally there's a cool breeze. Of course, never when you're climbing hard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, it's just nice to stop and it's so quiet out here. I love the desert. <laughs> What's for lunch? All right, let's check this out. Well, this place has seen better days, huh? <laughs> There's actually a bed frame, look at that. Take a little nap. Put the thermorest right there. Let's check it out. As I impale myself. Yeah, don't get a splinter. Uh, <laughs> all right, dude. Is it comfy? Oh, there is a nail right here. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, the box spring. Scott That's... almost sat right on this nail. Maybe we can charge up our GoPros here. <laughs> and there's still some old parts of a car, it looks like. Look at that. And Scott's just going to take a little nap. Check this out. There's some old shoes here. I mean, I know it's junky looking right now, but imagine living here and having this area right outside your door every day, every night, the solitude, the stars at nighttime. You could write a lot of books out here. This is like a Thoreau cabin. For sure. I love it. Maybe you could write your next book here. Yeah, I should do that. <laughs> Look at all these old cans. This one here looks like spray paint or something. I bet some of these cans were full of beans. Cowboy beans. I don't know exactly what this cabin was used for, 
but I do know that there were uranium miners all over this area. So I'm guessing that's what this was. It was a little homestead for somebody mining uranium. This reminds me like the Iron Man movie where he finds all the broken pieces and builds an Iron Man suit <laughs> out of rusty nails and screws and spark plugs and whatever. What do you think that is? Old car stereo maybe? Oh yeah! a very enjoyable ride. The uphills are just hard enough. The downhills are fun. The sand is just firm enough. The sand is not too bad yet. Let's not jinx ourselves. We're riding through sand right now, but it's okay. And then the scenery is top notch. This route so far is getting a 10 out of 10 for me. I'm noticing something really interesting. Look at the color of this dirt. And then not far away, it is red, red, red. Very cool how many colors are out here in the desert. I feel really bad, but I just ran over a snake. And you know how much I love snakes, but luckily the ground is so soft that I don't think I hurt him. And he's right here, it looks like a racer. Really long, skinny snake, look. There he is. Wow, so cool. I'm sorry for running you over, but you seem to be okay. That snake was just chilling right in the middle of the road and I couldn't get out of the way and I tried to bunny hop it. My bike weighs 60 pounds, so that's not happening. Went right over him. Yeah! Woo! It's so beautiful, it's so beautiful. Yeah, find the edge, find the line. Some steep stuff and rocky. How does that feel? It's full on uh, mountain biking. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like to navigate that kind of stuff after having not really mountain biked in a long, long time? Because that's tough stuff. Yeah, no, it's tough, especially with like. What, I don't know, 60 pounds? Yeah, you have a lot of yeah, weight. Yeah, I don't know. But it's uh, it's fun, but challenging. In a good way. It's good. How do your fingers feel? Sometimes the brake fingers hurt. <laughs> I know, comfort in the hands and arms. I'm feeling the arms for sure. Just like, just going around. And now we go up, up, up. I think for a pretty long time. And if it's as technical as the downhill was, there might be a lot of hike a bike. Good boy. Come on.
you can really feel the extra water weight now going up this. Come on, buddy, come on. You got it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on buddy. Oh, oh, crap. Oh. Nope. Oh my god. I haven't worked that hard in a while. So there's a lot of big, beautiful canyons around here, but there's also a lot of cool little rock magic going on. This is just a small rock for size, scale. There's Scott, and here's the rock. And it's like it has its own little mini canyon cave system. You could spend all day here just checking out cool rocks and trees and flowers and side hikes and canyons and there's just really a lot going on here. I'm impressed. And there's there's nobody out here. Woo! Yodler here! <laughs> I'm not a very good Swiss yodeler. What do you think? Late lunch? Late lunch. I like it. I also like this rock providing some shade. I'm gonna be loving this cold soaked ramen. Really? So you've been soaking that all day? How does this work? Yeah, you just throw it all in, fill it with water. I put a little, actually dehydrated some Japanese curry sauce, so added a little twist to it. Let's get some salts and carbohydrates. Totally. It's gonna be fantastic. Thank you, big old boulder, for giving us some shade. This is a pretty epic spot. And what am I eating, you ask? No, it's not a burrito, actually. I'm not feeling super hungry, but I have a whole bag of nuts and the most important part, M&Ms. Oh, it feels good to chill for a little bit. That's some uphill. That's some hard uphill. <laughs> it was. Ah. All right, bike. Let's do some more uphill. Look at that steep road. No. <laughs> Probably doesn't look steep to you. GoPros never show the depth, but it's steep. Here we go. <sighs> yeah. Come on. You got this. I like to talk to myself. Pump myself up. And there we go. Ah. It's kind of hard sometimes to appreciate the beauty when you're just staring down and powering up a hill. But then you look up, whoa, and you see something like that. That's pretty inspiring. But I can't chill for too long because I have another big hill. Here we go. Come on. This is steep and downhill. Check it out, we're riding like a nice, wide, smooth road. I think, I think, I don't wanna jinx myself or us, but the behind the reef road that we were on was the hardest part of this entire ride. And we just did it. <laughs> Not to say that the rest is gonna be easy, but those last 20 miles were, they were tough, no doubt. 
this puppy for a spin here yeah man give it a give it a whirl let's see where's the gas pedal <laughs> <laughs> it's too small for a scott jurek i know <laughs> <laughs> look at this cool car we found convertible it's a convertible yeah <laughs> so we finally made it to the top all of the uphill for the day is done, and that was a lot of uphill. I don't know exactly how much, but it was plenty. It was hard. And I've been feeling lethargic and kind of sick and yucky feeling actually for the last hour. And I'm pretty sure it's because I wasn't drinking enough water. I was trying to conserve because I've, I know that there aren't many water opportunities out here, but I shouldn't have been doing that. I should have been drinking because I have plenty. So the last hour I've been chugging water and had a electrolyte pill and I'm feeling better and we're going downhill which makes everything better <laughs> This area is insanely beautiful! <laughs> wow! <laughs> what do you think? Not too bad, huh? Not too bad. It's pretty swell. It is swell. <laughs> I'm on desert beauty overload right now. We've got magic hour. We've got downhill. We have a great day of riding. And we're almost done. Life is good. Maybe we'll get water. Maybe we'll get water, yes. That'd be pretty sweet too. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, dude, there's plenty of water in there. And it looks muddy. <laughs> Aptly named Muddy Creek. Right on. Who's jumping in first? Don't fall in. I'm gonna filter some water. I'm gonna testing out this little new hydro pack. Cool. Filter. So that, what's the process here? Process is get flowing water ideal. All right, flowing water, check. Screwed on. And it's ready to drink pretty much instantly once it comes out? Sure is, that's the beauty of it. It's like full on, ready to go. We've oh, been told so there good. might be lots of uranium in this water, <laughs> so Scott's gonna turn into a superhero now, radioactive man. How's radioactive, it oh, it's so good. Does it taste good? Cold. It's cold, yeah. And there's the water, totally clear. 
that's impressive because if you look at that water, it does not look clear. Yeah, man, way to go. That was awesome. That was an awesome day so, for sure. And what look, a way get, to finish. What a way to finish. And look at this, we get to camp under cottonwoods, next to a creek. I know, water source, lots of water. Lots of water. I always love jumping in water at the end of a day of riding my bike. You get to clean off all the grime and the salt, and I just always sleep so much better. Boing, boing, boing. There's the water. Ah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is going to be real chilly. Right. Oh, God. <laughs> and now it's time to do some laundry in the creek. But where do we put it now? <laughs> Here we go, one, two. Ah. It's not quite deep enough to float. It's not quite deep. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> That's the best. If there was more water, you could just float. I know. I could just... wonder where this, this water probably goes to the Colorado River. Yeah, I wonder where. <laughs> that was fun, and I feel much better. Water is the best. No wait, beans are the best. Oh, Scott's got bag of beans. Bag of beans. And it's tortillas. Not, not exactly the lightest way to go. I usually use dehydrated beans, but I'm like, I'm gonna splurge. Check it out, Amy's vegan bean and cheese burrito. It's been warming up in my frame bag all day. And it actually uh, feels pretty warm. <laughs> Bam. <Yes. laughs> So what is Scott Jurek, the master chef, doing now? Now it's uh, it's time to soak the oats. Soak the tomorrow, oats. Tomorrow's breakfast. Oh, look at that. And then you just pour water in and leave it overnight and you wake up, you have oatmeal. Exactly, cold soaked oats. And I wanna show you something really cool. I'm gonna zoom in, check this out. There's a giant window up here. How cool is that? We noticed it as we were riding in today. Mother Nature is awesome. So here we are sitting around our non-existent campfire <laughs> and we're talking about doing hard things in life and Scott here has done some of the most difficult things any human's ever done. He's run the entire Appalachian Trail 50 miles a day for 46 days, 100 mile ultra marathon, Spartathlon in, where is that? What Greece. Country? Greece, uh, the uh, 135 miles through Death Valley, how many times? won that twice. You won it twice. And this is running, not biking. So I think that's harder, really. And so, Scott, I know people out there always appreciate appreciate these types of tips, but what, how do you get through really hard moments when your body's like, I'm done, I'm toast, I want out of here? Because obviously you've gotten through those moments many times in your life. I mean, I think, I mean, there's lots of pieces. I think everyone, has their ways. I mean, for me, I would say like the biggest thing is accepting the situation you're in. Like, for me, um, you know, I, I have those doubts in my head, just like everyone else. I think you get better at dealing with it, but you never escape the like, oh, gosh, you know, I could be at home on my couch, <laughs> like being way more comfortable. Like there's still, um, like I know the benefits of being uncomfortable, of doing hard things, of like, um, you know, just elective suffering or challenge. Um, but in the moment, it's really, what's really key is like accepting the situation, have your emotional down moments but not stay stuck in it. And for me, uh, there's different techniques. I mean, sometimes I'll be doing things where I'm like, okay, you now I have to look at, you know, the bright side of things. So like, I am able to power my body. You know, I mentioned earlier about a mantra I love, which is, you know, this is what I came for. And we, want to do these things <laughs> we like choose to do them um or for some people you know you know you haven't maybe 
wanted to delve into that. And I think it's, it's a great place to be. And the more you put yourself in that situation of like recognizing, like I chose to do this, I know it's going to be hard, the better you get at getting through the emotional, like just battle of like, you know, why am I out here? Um, <laughs> this sucks. And it's great for life challenges. So I feel like I've fed off of life challenges to help me be a better endurance and ultra endurance athlete. And then I've been able to um, feed off of the situations that I've gotten through in whether it's in a race, training, um, doing speed records, um, which are different element, different beast, multi-day, or just even doing this too, like getting out of one's comfort zone. I mean, I definitely today, <laughs> I mean, I know Shook Doozer is laughing at me. Like I just haven't been on a mountain bike in a while. I was like, wow, oh, this is a lot more real hardcore mountain biking initially. Um, and so it's like, you know, finding your edge and like putting your tiptoes in that edge of you know a raging river and just feeling like okay I'm getting introduced to this I'm like trying to push myself out of like comfortable situations and I think that's um that's the best thing is just because everyone's different I mean some people you know use I've used music when I've been down sometimes um I don't often use music but music can act like ibuprofen <laughs> it's like been documented in research studies like it's like get, getting like an analgesic effect um so music can be helpful um i'm always reminded like i said just having the ability to do these things reminding myself like i always draw on strength of my late mother who had ms and struggled with a disease that took pretty much all of her physical abilities even like swallowing and so when I'm out there I'm like okay I can't complain right now yeah it's 100 degrees or yeah I just puked because I was on the edge of dehydration and like yeah my stomach is uh, <laughs> in knots and I'm just like hating uh, the situation I'm in hating life at the time but I'm reminded of people who have it way worse than me or have had it worse and yeah, so like using different things. I mean, people run for causes um, or do endurance challenges for causes or, you know, it's just they have a connection of like, okay, I'm doing this for something beyond me. And that can be helpful when, even though it's weird because we do this stuff for ourselves, like it's pretty selfish to be. But it's also um, super important, I think, to do these things. So as much as it might be, oh, I I mean, I, I have two kids now and having a family, it's like, okay, it's selfish to come out here for two days. Um, but at the same time, we need to do these things. We need to recharge. We need to do the hard things that, I don't know, the mundane work and all the other stuff that we do. Um, and it's, I mean, it's pretty amazing when you like look out and see the places you can power your body and where you can go. Um, and along the way, you've got to get through tough 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 time. tough the tough stuff and there's other techniques i've i've tuned into my breath a lot of people um i think over like eons of time you know thousands of years whether it's the study of meditation zen um yoga um i've drawn off of a lot of those elements that i've studied pieces of it and tried to integrate it into my daily life or just when i'm out just try to focus on my breath okay forget all the pain that's raging through my body or the discomfort um, or just the mental of like, I have another 50 miles to go. I have, you know, 40 more days of this stuff. Um, things like that and just tuning into the present moment and breath is a great way to connect into the present moment. Um, sometimes it's paying attention to what your body is doing. We're out on bikes, you know, today I'm like, okay, I gotta balance out my pedal stroke, put more, you know, force into my right side, like my dominant side always wants to kick in. So some of those like simple repetitious body things that you're doing, your technique with running, biking, skiing, walking, whatever you're doing, hiking, can just draw you out of the pain cave. Sometimes, or at least, at least give you glimmers of like, okay, um, I forgot about my emotional and just mental state of like th this uphill's too far, it's too hot out or too cold, the rain's driving, the wind's blowing in your, you know, right <laughs> headwind, like the worst thing. So I think, um, and it's just, there's no magical 
like combination of those things. And so those are little tools. So you try to find the little um, tools that work for you and you try to develop a tool chest to like pull out those tools occasionally. And sometimes, I mean, it just means putting one foot in front of the other or like today, <laughs> one pedal stroke like after the other. And it's like, for me, chunking like the big goal into smaller pieces, like let's get into like the next pass let's get to the next road crossing let's get to the next trailhead um, just landmarks are really helpful with that in breaking the larger goal into pieces um, because like the Appalachian Trail if I thought halfway through like I still have you know 1100 miles to go <laughs> it's a, it's not a good thing to think about um, it's cool to think of how far you've gone and like it's I love when I'm out in landscapes like this where you can like see and be like well we used to be down in that canyon way across there um, and that's helpful but you, you just can't dwell on like too far ahead today was harder than I thought it was going to be for sure no I felt like such a like I don't know <laughs> a newbie out there like walking downhills like I'm like yeah. I'm out here but I was like yeah, there's, I was kind of like, yeah, I need to, I need to refine things. It, it was a good like test of like testing out some new things. I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be on SPDs. Like, yeah. um, things that just, yeah. Are my, shouldn't be locked school. into your pedals when you're going down something <laughs> yeah. super steep, um, but it's scary, you know, and you, you know, like you said, you hadn't really done anything like this in many, many years and riding your bike up or down technical train just takes repetition, you know, and so. I'm, it's been it's been fun to watch you get after <laughs> it, man. Yeah, and you know, like this is a tip for all of you out there. Like, you might want to rage and go fast and push your limits when you're bike packing, but a lot of times it's not worth it. Because if you crash, if you get hurt, you're in the middle of nowhere. Like, you can't just like call mom and go home. So you have to be a little bit more cautious about the risks you take when you're out in the backcountry. And you know, you said you were walking the downhill hills and felt kind of silly, but you know, you made the right decision. I mean, it's, and having weight on the bike too. Like, I mean, we were hauling 11 pounds of water, which is a lot. It's a lot of weight of water and then food. I mean, just sleeping gear, like, yeah, we're going pretty lightweight, but it's still a lot on the bike. Like, yeah. Managing that load um, and finding out, but that's part of the fun too, is like doing yeah man doing the tough stuff and guess what we get to wake up here tomorrow and we get to have more fun on our bikes tomorrow no, and i don't think tomorrow that. should be as hard no it was so. pretty nice to mellow out after 15 <laughs> miles of like <laughs> yeah tough stuff tough stuff but it's good and it's great to be out here yeah it is. with one of uh the masters yeah right <laughs> you're the master <laughs> anyway all right that's enough that's enough of campfire talk Campfire talk with no campfire. With no campfire, that's all right. <laughs>